This program is brought to you by Dolku Media. Fixing South Sudan, ideas for the new nation. With award-winning journalist Madin Mor. Absolutely. Honorable Achim, as you can see, the ideas of the initiatives are merit. The July, uh, on July 8th, uh, the clashes in J1 took place, which was very unfortunate. Including uh, country-specific ones, uh, which the rebellion continued. Fixing South Sudan, ideas for the new nation. Hello, welcome to Fixing South Sudan, your ideas for building the new nation. I am Mading Or. This week, Honorable Jama Nunu Kumba, the Acting Secretary General of the Sudan People's Liberation Movement and a member of its political bureau, takes a stand on the agreement on the reunification of the SPLM, otherwise nicknamed as the Arusha Accord. Is SPLM reunion a good idea for fixing South Sudan? Honorable Jama Nunu Kumba, thanks for coming to Fixing South Sudan. Thank you. How are you today? I'm fine, thank so you. So what is the agreement? And then we'll talk about what is new. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, you see, this agreement was signed in 2015. Uh, the process started in, in 2014. And this was based on the realization that uh, on the fact that the crisis of 2013 came about as a result of the differences within the SPLM leadership. Therefore, to bring peace or to accelerate the then peace process that was going on in, um, in Addis, it was um, seen necessary for the SPLM to come together so that they can have a unified voice uh, to solve the crisis. So this process was supported by the region and facilitated first by Ethiopia, uh, EPRDF, the ruling party, and then later on the ANC of South Africa came in, and then the CCM of um, um, Tanzania also came in as facilitators and uh, co guarantors for the, for the process. So, uh, as I said, there were differences among the SPLM, the top leadership, on issues of constitution. Yes, so, actually, let's, let's get into the agreement. Uh, here is some of the things that it says. It's the intra-SPLM agreement. It acknowledges the glaring failures uh, of the party, namely failure to democratize the party, loss of ideological direction, pervasive culture of militarism and sectarianism. So if these vices, that is my question, if these vices are so prevalent within the SPLM, what, is, what are you rallying around? I wouldn't say these were really the core issues that divided the, the people. The core issues that divided the people were in the areas of um, selection of leaders. In the constitution, um, there are provisions on how leadership is transferred through an internal democratic process. So there were some provisions there like the appointment of deputies, appointment of secretary general, um, the 5% the, the allocation to the chairman to bring in minority group who cannot, you know, who cannot succeed through um, pro, uh, pro, um, elections. So this provision was done to make sure that everybody is inclusive. But some of our colleagues saw this as undemocratic and they demanded that it has to change. So all these issues were addressed within Arusha. We removed all the things that they did not want for the sake of the unity of the SPLM and the unity of the people. So all these things were, were resolved and that's why um, the three factions of the SPLM, the former detainees, the SPLM in your position signed this document because they were convinced that the issues, the constitutional issues that divided the SPLM were all addressed. So this we were expecting, of course, after signing this agreement, uh, the SPLM should uh, come together. But then 
uh, when we moved back to, to South Sudan, the SPLM IO came in, we uh, straight away started the implementation of this agreement by incorporating those provisions that were agreed into the SPLM constitution. And that's why we held um, an extraordinary convention uh, to bring all the members of SPLM to a forum whereby they will be informed of the Arusha agreement and then incorporate those uh, provisions into the constitution itself. And this was successfully done. And uh, both the FDs and the SPLM IO were convinced by that. So you, what is... You started implementing Arusha. Yes. And some of the uh, factions came in. Yeah. And then what happened? We reviewed the constitution together. We reviewed the constitution together based on the Arusha agreement. We also reviewed the manifesto because now uh, the manifesto we had was the old manifesto which was during the uh, one Sudan. And uh, we reviewed that in view of the Arusha agreement also. And um, of course, things happened later. You know, again, the war started, Dr. Riyak came and uh, he came with another constitution from Pagak and insisted that this should be the basis. But of course, uh, the agreement uh, said the basis of the review of the Australian constitution is the Arusha agreement. So this he could not get on with it and um, we worked on the basis of Arusha agreement. Arusha has come under intense uh, criticism from citizens, from many observers of the SPLM. In fact, we have uh, some views from social media. Yeah. Isaiah Cholkuch writes, even for a husband and wife, there comes a time when a divorce is necessary. Must the various SPLM factions unite for South Sudan to move forward? Yeah, you know, divorce comes about if you have, all, or if you have tried all means to keep the, the marriage together. So it's the same thing we are doing because we believe that SPLM as a historical party, SPLM as the majority party in South Sudan, has a lot to do to bring peace to South Sudan and to bring the unity of the people. You see, it is this party that split into three. And now, for them not to be together means that the people Will, will remain divided, the country will continue to be in crisis. That's why we believe that the unity of the SPLM is important for this country. When is divorce ever necessary for the SPLM factions? As I said, we are trying our best to make sure that the SPLM comes together. Because by coming together, we can be able to unite the people, we can be able to plan for peace, we can be able to plan for development of the country. But of course, as I said, it's, it's a democracy. Those who would not like to come back to SPLM, that would want to divorce the SPLM, it is their right. We won't force them. But we are making an attempt to make sure that the unity of SPLM is achieved. The and SPLM, it is good for this country. The, SP is good the for unity this country. is good for this country. How? Because who are the ones fighting now? Dr. Yag was an SPLM, the first deputy chairman of the SPLM. He is fighting. The FDs, some of them are with us in government. Some are outside the country, like those of former Secretary General Pagana Moon and uh, uh, others. So what are they doing outside there? They are also playing a role to make sure that this crisis continues. The splits within the SPLM are not new. They date back to 1991. And then it is splintered to many factions after that. And then, of course, in, in, uh, and then at some point, Lama Akol had his own faction. And uh, now it is a democrat democratic change party. That is the only exception. But everyone else has kept the SPLM name. So if it keeps happening, we are even calling it a reunification agreement. That means there was a union, and then it broke down. So, and this is a legitimate question that South Sudanese are asking. Uh, also on Facebook, Malak Majuk says, is it SPLM groups to unite or should all armed actors be brought into the fold? Well, uh, the SPLM is the main player in the political arena of South Sudan. So, um, they have, the SPLM has taken a lead. 
We also believe that when SPLM is uh, united, we can be able to see how we can bring the other groups in. Because the other groups that went to, for rebellion went after the Arusha Agreement was signed. So their rebellion is not based on any differences on the constitution of the SPLM. They have their own, um, their own grievances or their own reasons why they went. So for us, we are focusing on the Arusha and the signatories to Arusha to reunite. And after that, we can now also look um, at how we can bring the other, other groups in. Because our, our ultimate goal is really to stop the war, bring everybody on board. And that's why even now um, the president has launched this national dialogue and he has opened up invitation for everybody to come, including those who are, who are fighting. Let, let's talk about what is being done to uh, revive the Arusha Accord. There's a new process in Uganda by the president of Uganda. Tell us about that. Yeah, as I said, um, the Arusha agreement had addressed all differences among the leaders. Now what is remaining is implementation. The process in, 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 a, in a Uganda is not about the renegotiation of the Arusha agreement. It's about the implementation. Um, we are talking about uh, coming together at the tripartite group to develop a roadmap uh, for the implementation of Arusha agreement. That's what we are doing in, in, in Entebbe. And we had held two meetings. The first one, um, the three, three groups were there. And then with the exception of React Machar group. With the exception of React Machar group, yeah. Uh, so uh, during that meeting, uh, the issue of uh, React Machar was brought in. And uh, we uh, agreed that we have no problem. Uh, he can send delegation uh, to participate in, the, in this process. So in the last, last meeting last, uh, of last week, um, Dr. React Machar could not send his delegation because of some reasons he put. He said he got the information late, and therefore he could not send delegation. So we had to uh, adjourn the meeting uh, pending uh, the, the, the participation of uh, REACT's group. And the next meeting is scheduled for next month, 13th. Yeah, the Secretary General of the mainstream pa party, the, yes. the, the mother party. So when we talk about reunification, everybody is joining you. And is it your sense that when everyone joined you, that South Sudan will be at peace? When all the factions of the SPLM come together, can you categorically say that South Sudan is going to be peaceful? Well, yes, South Sudan will be peaceful because we are going to work as one body uh, to develop strategies on how we can comprehensively address the, 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 the ongoing war. We know uh, some groups are not directly SPLM, but we can work together as a ruling party to engage them, to engage those people so that they can, uh, they have to come and talk to the government, what, is their, what are their grievances, because I know uh, there is nothing which cannot be resolved. Let's take a break from here. This program is brought to you by Dolku Media. Catch up with your hosts on SSBC TV every Thursday 7.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. And repeat of the same every Friday 12 noon to 12.30 p.m. And on SSBC Radio every Saturday after 7 p.m. English News. And repeat of the same on Monday after 7 a.m. English News. For more information, contact plus 211-953-333-119 or send an email to madingor at gmail.com or else visit www.dalcomedia.com. Welcome back to Fixing South Sudan, your ideas for building the new nation. I am Adingor. Joining us is Honorable German Nunu Kumba. We are talking about the SPLM Reunification Agreement. At the heart of the conflict in 2015 was power struggle within the SPLM. And there are legitimate fears and there is a question, what if you unite again, how would you address these power cycles that happen from time to time? Uh, you see, um, our constitution of the party is very clear about um, the issue of power sharing, the issue of transfer of power. 
uh, the conflict in 2013 was unnecessary because uh, we were going for elections. And before elections, of course, the party uh, goes for national convention, through which leaders of the parties are elected at all levels. <coughs> so again, anybody who wants to be a leader of the SPLM should go through that democratic process, and there should be no shortcut. It is because of people who fear democracy that they opted to go for a shortcut, maybe through um, violence and think that they can go and fight and come to assume power. This cannot happen in the modern um, democratic systems of the world. So if we come together, everybody, anyone who wants to be the leader at any level has to go through the elections. You will open up yourself for democracy. Of course. 100%. That is what SPLM fought for. That is the new SPLM? Or is that the previous SPLM? Of course it is the same SPLM, because all the leaders who are there now, let's say the, the current chairman, Comrade Salfa Mayadi, he was elected, okay? He was elected by the people to be the head of state. He was also endorsed through the convention. He was elected through the national convention of the SPLM to be the chairman in 2008, to be the chairman of the SPLM. So. Anybody who wants to compete within the SPLM is free to do that. And the members of the SPLM will endorse his or her, um, or, or, or her leadership. So that, that, that's, that, there should be no fear at all. There is a belief that has built itself around your party. It is said that when the SPLM unite, they loot the resources of the nation. And when they diverge, they kill people. How do you overcome such perception? Well, these are perceptions of, of people uh, about the SPLM. So are they, are they correct perceptions? Well, I can't say um, there has been no corruption. We, we, we can admit that there have been corruption for many reasons. First of all, when we came, when we, we came back from the war, there was absence of systems and institutions. And you, you can't blame um, Somebody who have come, there are no systems, there are no banks. When we came, there were no proper banking system. Maybe money were kept in the offices and so on. But in the process, things can happen. You have, but you it have is no not. agenda to govern South Sudan. We have. We have agenda, of course. And then how did things degenerate? <laughs> but so things you... are not the same the way they used to be. Because we came and found a situation where there were no systems. And we tried our best to establish systems. And that's why now... The issue of corruption is not as much as it used to be. Because I don't think it is, the, it is an, a, 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 a policy of the SPLM to loot, to loot the country. These are individuals, it is, it is done on individual level. It is not a systematic, uh, it is not a systematic uh, thing that is happening, that it is P SPLM knows and SPLM has put a system in place that is for looting the country. Madam Secretary General, how can you justify to the people of South Sudan all the pain that they have gone through as a result of what happened within the, the party, the ruling party. So why, why should they, they be for this, this Arusha Accord? Of course, what has happened, uh, the crisis 2013 was unfortunate. And it was caused by individuals. And the chairman of the SPLM came out openly and apologized to the people for what has happened, for the crisis that took place, and for the suffering that they've gone through. And he apologized to them. And now he's trying his best. And this reunification process is his initiative to try to bring SPLM again together. What is, what is the vision of the SPLM? Why, what are they coming together to do? We are coming together to put our country in order, to implement the peace agreement that was signed, to implement the, 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 the programs, the reform programs, in all sectors, in economic sector, in the uh, security sector, all these provisions are in the agreement, and that's what we are coming to, to implement. And we have opened up for a forum through the National Dialogue for people to come and speak. What do they want us to do? And the SPLM, as a ruling party, will implement what they will say. And we are trying our best also to implement the peace agreement, which addresses 
fundamental issues of rule of law, of security, um, economic reforms, and so on. So we have been very clear from, from the beginning that we want a prosperous country. We want a democratic system. And we want a country where there is justice and equality for everyone. Let's talk about your impact. You are the one steering uh, the process uh, in, the, in the interim. So what have you done since you came in? Well, I came in um, at a critical time. And uh, of course, the first assignment for us was to, uh, first of all, bring the Arusha Agreement and incorporate it into the Constitution. And then start rebuilding the, the SPLM. And um, we are also supposed to reorganize the party, to reorganize the party as we prepare for our national convention, the third convention, which will also lead us to the next elections. So these are the processes we are working on now, and that's why we, 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 uh, we, we, we agreed last time that, okay, let's focus on peace, let's bring peace, and then we can, when everybody comes back, uh, we will be able to start the reorganization of the SPLM. So again, this is an attempt to bring everybody on board so that we can start reorganization and prepare for the convention, as we also prepare for elections next year, after the end of the interim, interim period. So that's why we want everybody to be on board. When everybody is on board, what is the next thing? There will be competition within the party. Of course. We have to start a reorganization at the grassroots. We have to carry out our congresses from the grassroots up to the state levels and then the national level. And through that process, leadership will be elected at all the levels. There and is a pervasive question. Which one comes first, party unity or peace in the country? Uh, you see, it is like um, egg and chicken. If you are not united, the crisis will continue. If you are not united, there will be no peace. You see? So, um, we believe that the unity is, is important for us to have peace. And then other things will follow. SPLM was a liberation movement. And is it the party to bring prosperity to South Sudan? How? You know, um, if you look at the political parties in South Sudan, SPLM, of course, is a liberation party. Its history is known. We brought the country. We brought independence of South Sudan. We freed our people from oppression. And we want to build a country that is prosperous. So SPLM is the only party that covers the whole country. It is not a regional-based regional party. It's not an ethnic-based party. It's a party. It's a people's party all across South Sudan. Today, if you go to any corner of South Sudan, you will find the SPLM there, across the ethnic groups of South Sudan. That's why we believe that we are the only party that unites the people. And if we, we start dividing, then we divide our people. Other parties, are ethnic, ethnic uh, uh, is uh, tribal based. Some are regional based. Some are even county. You know, find some of them just in small areas. But that's why, because of our of our history, because of our popularity, and because of our visions and objectives, we are the right party to take this country. We are the forward. right party, but every time the party divides, it divides along tribal lines. So how is SPLM a national party? In the same way we can talk about reforms as in the SPLA, what do you think is needed? Because is it going to be, and this is the fear of people, they are going to unite, return back to status quo. What is going to change? What do you mean is status quo? Status quo, everyone, this is the eating pace where you come together and you eat the resources of the nation. Well, you know, again, this corruption you're talking about is an individual basis. It is not, it's not, it's not the SPLM as, well, as a whole. You have to, to separate SPLM as an organization from SPLM as individuals, right? Um, the, the, our constitution is very clear My that we are is, not ethnical based. 
Okay, and we don't promote uh, ethnicity, we don't promote sectarianism, we don't promote anything negative. All right? But individuals come out with their own interests. You know, individuals have their own interests, they have their own ambition. And if you look at what happened, these are few individuals that, that, uh, that, uh, that went against the, the, the principles of the party. It is not the masses of, 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 of the SPLM. These are individuals who are ambitions for power, who are causing problems. The SPLM, the party of Dr. John Gering, was all about New Sudan. And after that is out of the equation. You know, it's a question, as the SPLM lost its spirit, what, what, what defines SPLM? If, if you should talk about SPLM, what is SPLM any longer? The SPLM vision remains. Um, the, the, the current leadership of the SPLM is carrying on its vision. There is nothing like we have lost vision, we have lost what? Well, what is the vision? You know, <laughs> when we fought, we fought as, you know, we were rallied, uh, we rallied behind one common objective, which was to, 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 to liberate ourselves. And we have achieved that. But even with, during the process, some individuals opted to go out again based on their own ambitions and so on. And the, the SPLM was divided in 19. How, how do you take the country uh, to a collective program for national unity, peace, reconciliation, and healing? That is stated in Arusha. How do we achieve healing, peace building in South Sudan? Because you see our country is caught up at war. Yeah. First of all, um, we will do that by implementing the peace agreement. Second, we have the national dialogue where people will come and express their views about everything that has happened and also chart the way forward. And the SPLM leadership, the president has made a commitment that whatever people say in this national dialogue, he's going to implement them. So it's peace building and um, uh, national healing. It's not a one day event. It is a continuous process. People have to be engaged. People have to forgive each other. People have to reconcile. We know there is a lot of bitterness now because of what has happened. People have died. People have suffered. People have gone to exile. But this is going to take time for us to come together to apologize to ourselves, to forgive and then reconcile and move forward. We cannot stick to the past. We need to think about the future. We need to think about the future of this country. We need to put the interest of the country first and put our interest second. Is reunification agreement for the SPLM a good idea for fixing South Sudan? Yeah, it is a good idea. As you mentioned before that in 1991 there was a split. That split was, uh, had a negative impact on the movement. It derailed the process of liberation. But again, because of the importance of unity, no, in 2002, the Torea came back and the, the, the rest, and then the SPLM became one. And that is how we managed to um, negotiate the peace agreement as one body, and then we signed the CPA, you see. So now again, uh, the, the division has a negative impact on the party. And that's why we believe that we need to reconcile and come together as one body and then think together how to take our country forward how to achieve the objectives, the objectives and the goals and the mission of the SPL. Honorable Jamanunu, thanks for coming to Fixing Sasuna.